In the summer of 1995, Jeff Bezos was running the then tiny Amazon on his parents' life savings. He had just hired employee number five and had to buy an extra desk. So he went to Home Depot across the street and saw that the desks were more expensive than the doors. So he decided to buy a door and put some legs under it. This door desk symbolized frugality, which became one of the company's core values. When you have a problem, find the easiest and least expensive way to solve it. This is a great example of how company culture can take shape. Imagine you're one of the early employees at Amazon and you know that story. You'll think twice before making an expensive purchase for the company. That shows the power of organizational culture. It helps to build behaviors we want to see from our employees. And if we do it well, it helps us engage and retain a productive workforce. Hi, I'm Eric van Volpen, and in this HR Deep Dive, you'll learn what organizational culture is, how culture can explain why people at Amazon do not use PowerPoint, and you'll learn about four different types of organizational culture and how you can recognize them. So let's get started. Organizational culture explains why people in an organization act and think in a similar way. At Amazon, organizational culture explains why people are more frugal and efficient, while other companies have different values. Culture is about what is celebrated, what is tolerated, and what you cannot do inside an organization. If you work at a corporate law firm, you may find a competitive culture where you either get promoted or you leave. This is called up or out. Or you may work in a local government, which is a much more political organization aimed at building consensus and involving everyone. Depending on your personality and preference, you'll be attracted to different types of organizations. That is how organizational culture works. But apart from manually screwing legs on doors, how do you build culture? For that, we first need to understand how organizational cultures are formed. Think of culture as an iceberg. Why an iceberg? Because a big part of organizational culture is not directly visible, but it plays a huge role in what is expected and how work is done. The iceberg is divided into three parts. On the top, sticking out above the water, are the artifacts and behaviors that any newcomer in the organization would easily notice. These are your desk doors. In the middle layer, just under the surface, you have norms and values. And then all the way at the bottom, you have the underlying assumptions and beliefs that inform a company's culture. To really understand how organizational culture is shaped, let's take a deep dive and explore the different layers of the iceberg. The artifacts and behaviors at the top of the iceberg include symbols, beliefs, rituals, and myths and stories. These are easy to recognize. Symbols include the dress codes, the way the office space is laid out, as well as ceremonies and events. Amazon's door desk is another symbol. When you work at Amazon and ask a colleague why you have these weird looking desks, you'll immediately get an answer. The door desk anecdote is a story or a myth. The desk does not matter. What matters is what it stands for. It symbolizes Amazon's culture of frugality, which has served the organization well. A ritual at Amazon is that they do not use PowerPoint. Instead, the host of the meeting prepares a six-pager, which is a six-page document in which the idea of the meeting is written down. The first 20 minutes of the meeting is then spent in silence with everyone reading the document before it is discussed and challenged. The six-pager is then updated with all the new inputs, making it very easy to share with other teams as well. This six-pager is culturally significant because it ensures that everyone is literally on the same page. The focus is on the substance and not on the delivery. The cultural value that Amazon communicates with this ritual is a focus on results. Of course, you may not always agree with how an organization gets there, but Amazon is a great example of a culture that has helped the organization be successful. Below the water surface, you have adopted norms and values. These are also called espoused values. They are the underlying justification of the stories, beliefs, and artifacts. To observe these norms and values, you have to look a little deeper at how people behave. For example, are senior leaders sitting next to employees? And can you just walk up to them and share your honest opinion? Or are they sitting in their own room at the top floor and not mingling with anyone at all? These behaviors are important indicators of how hierarchical your organizational culture is. Amazon has four clearly stated values. First, customer obsession. Bezos does not want you to be customer-centric, he wants employees to be customer-obsessed. 
Second, long-term thinking. Bezos believed that having a long time horizon is critical if you want to build something big and enduring. Amazon invested, for example, over a decade in Amazon Prime before it started to generate profit and boost e-commerce sales. Third, eagerness to invent. Characterized by an open culture in which people are not afraid to take risks, experiment and innovate. And finally, pride in operational excellence. This is where the DoorDesk example comes in. Costs need to be low and service fast. These values are communicated to employees and are used as guidelines for hiring and performance management. Finally, all the way down at the bottom of the iceberg are the underlying assumptions. These are values that are unconscious and difficult to observe. These beliefs are taken for granted because they're not tangible or talked about, but they are the true motivators for people's behaviors. For example, a company might choose inclusion as a value, but if the underlying assumption is that it's every person for themselves, you won't see the organization living up to that. A famous example is Enron, a US-based energy company that went bankrupt in 2001 after an accounting scandal. Enron had a good reputation amongst the public and investors. However, the underlying assumption at the company fueled greed and corruption. This led to a toxic culture in which short-term profits took priority and inflating the company's stock value was seen as acceptable. This is a perfect example of a company that may have quoted all the right values to the outside world, which is the top of the iceberg, but the unwritten rules allowed for a culture that ended up ruining the company. So let's talk about the four different cultures that we generally find in organizations. The four organizational cultures are mapped on the competing values framework, which has two axes that show opposing forces in an organization. An organization can be either flexible or stable, and internally or externally oriented. Because of these, we see the clan, adhocracy, hierarchy, and market culture. At the end of the video, you'll learn what kind of organization Amazon is, but let's first make these four cultures a bit more practical. Let me introduce you to the four heroes of our stories. Mr. Clan, Mrs. Adhocracy, Mr. Hierarchy, and Mrs. Market. Mr. Clan finds it very important that people are involved, collaborate, and work together. In his company, he starts the week with a stand-up where they first check in on how every team member is doing before getting down to business. Mr. Clan values cooperation and would rather do things together than alone, even if it means that things would go slower as a result. Mr. Clan values trust and loyalty just as much as the ability to get things done, and his team feels supported, cared for, and safe, which helps them to collaborate effectively. Because of his collaborative spirit, Mr. Clan's organization is able to adapt to change. You can find Mr. Clan in small or family-owned businesses, local governments, or customer service organizations. Mrs. Adhocracy has a team of creative innovators who like change, who are entrepreneurial, and are looking to continuously grow the organization and themselves. Sometimes, an employee may be left behind because they are unable to change as quickly or get frustrated due to the lack of structure and shoot-from-the-hip decision-making. Where Mr. Clan would wait and make sure that this employee was able to catch up, Mrs. Adhocracy has already moved on because her focus is on serving the customer, and she thinks the customer is king. You'll find Mrs. Adhocracy in early-stage tech startups, in advertisement, design firms, and in research and development. Next up, we have Mr. Hierarchy. Mr. Hierarchy likes order, procedures, structure, quality, and predictability. In his organization, there are set rules, processes, and policies to get things done. No one takes shortcuts, and the mentality is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unlike Mrs. Adhocracy, who thinks outside of the box, Mr. Hierarchy believes that there are tried and tested methods that will lead to success. Mr. Hierarchy believes that employees should have clear roles and responsibilities and that rules and regulations are vital for success. You'll find Mr. Hierarchy in the military, in hospitals, in church, or in any other organization where there's a clear chain of command. You may also find him running manufacturing businesses, like in the pharmaceutical industry, where you have strict rules and regulations, and where following the book is important. Finally, you have Mrs. Market. She is results-driven, so the first thing she does is like the video and subscribe to this channel, because that will get the numbers up. Where Mr. Hierarchy wants to stick by the book and follow the chain of command, 
Mrs. Market is competitive, will break rules to win, wants to be seen as the leader in the market, and shoot the lights out in terms of results. You'll find Mrs. Market in a sales-oriented organization, in investment-driven organizations, and professional services organizations like law firms, where everyone has clear targets and deadlines, gets bonuses when they perform well, and is let go when they don't. Just like Mrs. Adhocracy, Mrs. Market tries to best serve the external customer, but where Mrs. Adhocracy allows for idle time, innovation, and creative discussion, Mrs. Markets want to see results, and she wants to see them fast, no matter what it takes. Just like people with different personalities behave differently, organizations also behave in different ways depending on their culture. Which of these four cultures characterizes your organization best? See if you can identify it. Of course, nothing is black and white. You'll find Mr. Clan, Mrs. Adhocracy, Mr. Hierarchy, and Mrs. Market in all organizations. But every organization has more of one, than the other. For example, if Mrs. Market is the boss, driving sales and results, but Mrs. Adhocracy occasionally pops in to come up with new ideas and innovations, she will be able to launch new product that Mrs. Market can sell. So together, they make a more successful organization than alone. When different parts of the organization have different cultures, we call these subcultures. That means that Mr. Clan may run the show in the customer services or product department, where cooperation is important to get a good result. Mrs. Adhocracy may run the innovation department, while Mrs. Market is in charge of sales. This is an example of an organization that is able to manage competing values. This is easier said than done and requires great leadership, but research shows that organizations that are successfully able to manage the tension that these competing values bring are the ones that are most successful. So, where in our model would you place Amazon? Amazon is a great example of a company that is externally oriented and working to create the best online shopping experience for its customers. If we plot Amazon on a competing values framework, you'll find that its culture focuses on achievement and results and has a strong performance-based component. You'll also see that the organization is flat, experimentation is encouraged, and Amazon is known for its innovation. That makes Mrs. Adhocracy and Mrs. Market the two dominant cultures at the company. That's it for this deep dive in which you've learned about organizational culture. You've learned how cultures are formed and shaped over time. You've learned about the four different types of cultures. And you've learned about subcultures and how one organization may have multiple different cultures on the inside. If you've learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe.